In just a few months, NASA's space shuttle program will take its last flight. But the ABC Action News I team uncovered a problem at NASA happening on the ground. Investigator Michael George explains tonight. Eight, seven, six. They can put a man on the moon. One. Booster ignition. But they can't keep track of the equipment they use to do it. That's according to NASA reports obtained by the I team. Kennedy Space Center employees report just last year nearly half a million dollars of high-tech items simply vanished. Something's broke in the system. Suzanne Padone works for Inventory Management Solutions. Companies hire her to keep track of their inventory and make sure nothing falls through the cracks. We showed her what we found at NASA. It appears that there isn't really a process working year after year and it's probably going to continually get worse. General public is not going to be happy if they know assets are missing and it's not getting addressed. If you want to see what else NASA has lost over the last three years, you'll find a complete listing on our website, abcactionnews.com slash iteam. Michael George, ABC Action News. General public is not going to be happy if they know assets are missing and it's not getting addressed. It is time for America to take the next steps. Today I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. Our first goal is to complete the International Space Station by 2010. We will finish what we have started. Our third goal is to return to the moon by 2020. To return to the moon by 2020. as the launching point for missions beyond. Using the crew exploration vehicle, we will undertake extended human missions to the moon as early as 2015. Extended human missions to the moon as early as 2015 with the goal of living and working there for increasingly extended periods of time. With the experience and knowledge gained on the moon, we will then be ready to take the next steps of space exploration, human missions to Mars, and to worlds beyond. been to the moon in like 50 years and how come i've seen videos that says we lost the technology to go to the moon what is the truth about all that we s sort of initially lost it after the 1970s um, what does that mean the what does it mean to well, lose the technology it's very it's very very difficult and expensive to build a saturn 5 in those days in the 60s i'd say it was right on the edge of our capabilities it's astonishing that we managed to do it. I well, they say the, uh, now that your telephone has more capabilities than what they had in totality to fly to the moon. More, way more. So it was, it was almost too hard. Um, and I remember I, I got to speak to Charlie Duke, who um, flew, land, walked on the moon, Apollo 16. And he said that his dad remembered the Wright brothers flight. Right, so his dad <laughs> remembered the Wright brothers and then saw his son walk on the moon. So that's just almost impossible to believe. It was done. The other thing Charlie Duke said is that he said, when you've got like um, uh, 700,000 engineers and unlimited budget, you can do a lot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they had, right? um, so, so that's how they did it. But then, of course, it, at the time, it was very difficult, very dangerous and very expensive. And it was one of the great human achievements that we managed to do it. Now, it's, um, it's a lot less dangerous, a lot cheaper. And we have the technology and the computing power, as you say, to do it rather much more easily. So that's why we're going back now, because it's not you don't need 700,000 engineers and unlimited budget. Um, you, you now can do it. You know, SpaceX are pretty close. <laughs>
As I'm sure you might have read in the newspapers recently, a uh, moon rock that was on display in a Dutch museum, which, which you, Neil, and uh, Mike had given to the then ambassador to the Netherlands at the time, it turned out to be a piece of petrified wood. I was wondering, were, at the time, when you were in possession of this, were you aware that this was petrified wood, or were you also led to believe that it was a genuine moon rock? Petrified wood. Well, that doesn't sound like it came from wood. Uh, now, who did that? We, we, we have no idea. Uh, but I'm sure the United States would not present to world leaders a piece of petrified wood claiming that it was a, a sample from the moon. Hey, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe put it there. And what do we have to show for it? Rocks and other science. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And And if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen, because we didn't go there, and we didn't go there, and... Another aspect of doing long-duration missions where you're venturing off into the frontier, whether it's space station or whether we're going beyond low Earth orbit, and this has to do with the personal attitude of the crew members that are on the mission. And I'll kind of sum it up by saying you have to have a bit of a sense of humor. So we would stretch our clothing out longer than what it was initially intended. Initially, we were to wear a pair of underwear and socks and a T-shirt for three days and having no way to wash these aids in a weightless environment, then they're just discarded as rags to mop up stuff, and then finally discarded uh, with a fiery deorbit uh, trajectory into Earth's atmosphere. We stretched our clothing out to eight to 10 days, and we would wait until we started to get a little rash around our waist before we'd change our underwear. And that was sort of our signal that says, hey, I think it's time to get a new pair of skivvies. Say, so you have to have a bit of a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> oh.